Okay. Um, I, I, I talked quite much more uh, than, I, than I planned to, so sorry about that. But let's start here uh, with Hagen Rickmann from Deutsche Telekom, who's welcomed you as the host of this building and for our location, Hagen. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Warm welcome from my side. And you talk pretty long, but it's okay. I will do it a little bit shorter. First of all, I'm very glad to be here and uh, to say hello and a warm welcome to you. Why is this an important night for me as well? Because I'm a strong supporter of startups. I was a startup, but that was already 25 years ago. Uh, that was nice, very exciting. I will tell you later at the bar what I did. Maybe not so much in technology, just a little, but I know how it feels. But first of all, we really appreciate with the partners we are going to see here on stage with VW, with Eon, IBB, and a lot of more that you are here, that you are giving and taking your time to be here. Why is this so important for telecom and for the big boys as well and for the small boys to interact and have such a start up night tonight? Because this is from my perspective the difference what we need to know to compete and to be successful jointly in the market. If you are not giving us good ideas, I cannot make you successful. And I'm here tonight with the partners to make you successful. Because on your back, maybe sometimes a little, and later you on my back, we can win the market. And Berlin is the focus point of startups, and we are supporting this now for seven years. This is the seventh startup night, what we are doing here. And I'm personally contributing and supporting startups every day. How do I do this? I bring them to my customers every day because I believe when I can help you, in the end, I can also make more revenue. So I'm not so idealistic sometimes, but if I make you successful, I can be successful. This night tonight is going to be another difference. And it's more mature than the years before because we are more professional. It's not just fun and party, it's work but it's high quality work in a very nice environment with strong people who are creative, who are willing to invest and spend their time minimum up to 12 or later. So that is what I expect. And I only can say, let's have a great collaboration tonight. Let's exchange ideas. Let's mingle around and do the right things and find some values for customers, for the society, and in the end, also for us. Thank you very much, and welcome to the Startup Night. Thank you, Hagen. Let's, let's welcome uh, the rest of uh, the opening session uh, members, and it's Johannes Tyson, CEO of E.ON. Um, oh, yeah, come here. <laughs> we have uh, Matthias von Bismarck Osten from uh, IBB, and uh, Stefan Schnorr from BMWi. And let, let's have a seat, uh, dear colleagues. So let's, uh, thank you so much. <laughs> we, 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 are, we have to work on our jingle, uh, the one or the other might, might have heard that uh, we picked. Here comes the sun uh, as our uh, jingle from the Beatles here. Uh, but it's so quiet and we need to work on that, so it sounds much better. Um, thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much. Uh, we just had the press conference here a little bit earlier before we opened the doors and uh, we got some insights. So for the people who just ha have arrived, uh, I, I will repeat probably one or the other question. But uh, so first, my first question, uh, Hagen, goes out to you. Uh, you mentioned uh, it's the seventh uh, startup night. Um, you support this for many years. Yes. And you just mentioned that you also uh, bring uh, startups to your customers, right? So, uh, you, so why are you doing this and what is your expectation here? So if you elaborate a little bit more on that because yes, this is sure. why it's cool for startups. So we are known for connectivity and fixed line and mobile. That is what you all know, but the game is going to, to change. It is more about software and application, what is going to come. And we need to also as telecom play a role in that. 
But to develop software in different industries, in niches or in specialized areas is not our key competence. And with all the technologies coming along right now from cloud computing started with cloud to analytics, KI, uh, all this stuff, 5G, artificial intelligence, all those things are coming down now. And how to develop the application for B2B and maybe B2B2C. This is what we cannot do alone. And what we laid out four years ago was a program store called uh, Tech Boost and uh, Software Boost, where we support startups in their everyday business, in terms sometimes with money, but an important part is to help them to get access to customers and the market. I'm serving around 3.5 million B2B customers every day, and they are keen on also stepping into the digitization. They know us for connectivity, but they need to do the next step in transformation to go in the new era. So why not working with startups, using your technology on our back and bringing then you into the market? How does it work in practice or in, in the day-to-day the -day life? Pretty easy. So, for example, we send some of those customers we have identified and they are interested in to work with us a list of 20 or 30 solutions of, uh, of, of startups and their solutions in a very short description about a one pager. Then they select five out of this and they are doing in front of those customers a pitch. And guess what? Three of those five they do in the project with our customers on our back. So it's a win-win. You can place your solution. I can expand my scope with you together. And I can also provide churn and position myself as an innovation provider and not just delivery, delivering a fixed line or mobile. So it is more so that the value generation is more for our customers. That's the background and that is what we are doing. All right. Um, thank you. It's, uh, it's, um, you, you have even more than Tech Boost, right? We have uh, Hubraum, uh, Hubraum. Uh, T-Labs, all working yes. with startups. So for anyone who, who wants to meet people from Tech Boost, Hubraum uh, and uh, T-Labs, it's a booth inside in the back there. You can check them out as well. Um, Johannes, next question would go out to you. You are, uh, for the fourth time, partner of uh, Startup Night. <coughs> and uh, with your Agile Accelerator, you are very visible in the market. And um, so what are your, uh, being the CEO, what is your expectations on startups and uh, your expectation what startups will deliver to you and what you want to deliver to startups? It's not much that we expect, admittedly. Um, <laughs> And we know, you know, the whole world is about energy. <laughs> and the downside, the whole world about energy is also about climate change. So we just need to tackle the issue of uh, combining energy with climate change abatement. And we need anybody that helps us to go the extra mile there. Um, it's not just uh, about consumer goods, consumer communication, all good. But we need technology. We need unknown technology, untested technologies at scale and that are capable to really transform the world of energy towards a sustainable environment. It's a tough one. It's not one just running some, some sexy digital app. It's uh, about physics. It's about a lot of issues that we need to solve. And we are just eager to scout and see what we can find there. Uh, yeah, and plenty of them are here. That's, that's great. Good that you're here. Um, Stefan, um, question to you, um, what is, as being a representative of the government here, what is your main motivation to support startups, um, not only in Berlin, but of course in all over Germany? Yeah, thank you very much. And first of all, I want to thank all the partners from this event for organizing this uh, big event with uh, so many participants in this year. And uh, especially a very warm welcome to the startups and to the companies here. I am from the government, so I am not the important, the important actors here. And the main actors are the startups. And uh, it's indeed for us very important to support the startups because the startups are the driver of innovation. And they are a precondition. The successful startups are a precondition for a successful economy in our country. 
And therefore, it is very important for us uh, to support them to develop new business models, uh, new products, new services. Uh, and it's very important from our point of view that they uh, develop uh, systems that are globally scalable, but uh, uh, emerge or to emerge here in Germany. And on the other hand, it's very important that startups can help uh, established companies, SMEs, but also the industry, to find new solutions, to have another, another way of thinking, to have another mindset, and to help the companies to go new ways, uh, to go to develop new, new, uh, uh, new business models for the future. And therefore, I think uh, startups are indeed the basis for a successful economy in the future. And this is our motivation to support startups. And let me say, with a view to some developments in the United States or in China and uh, uh, in, the, in the world, it is also very important that we have uh, successful startups in Europe so that we have uh, something like a little bit uh, a sovereignty also in Europe with a view to some, de to, to some developments in the world. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thank you. The, 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 one of the motivations for Startup Night indeed is to showcase that we have yeah. the power here in Berlin, in Germany, yes. and uh, <laughs> there's nothing to hide uh, towards uh, uh, Asia or, or yes. uh, to, the, to North America. Or so. Make it in Germany. Yeah, and, and <laughs> Make uh, it in Berlin. So we have with Berlin. Matthias, we have someone here uh, who is a part of uh, the biggest investment, uh, institutional investment company of, of Germany. Uh, it's Investitionsbank Berlin. Matthias, uh, what are your plans to support uh, the ecosystem here and what can startups expect from you? Well, Jim, let me first say that we appreciate your event very much. That we, that's why we support it since its Day inception, one. 2013. It's a wonderful, you do a wonderful job in allowing so many startups, 270, to present themselves and to get connected to financiers and industrial partners. This is a, a great job. So if you hadn't invented it already, you would have to do so now, <laughs> Tim, but we are glad this um, institution does exist. And you know. Well, you, you said it is not about partying. Absolutely not. Well, there are also there are certainly things to celebrate, especially for the Berlin startup scene. Um, so we have 10,000 ICT companies in Berlin with a turnover of 10, a combined 10 billion euros and almost 100,000 jobs. This is a wonderful achievement and also in terms of quality. So if you remember the prejudice against the Berlin-based startup scene in the, in the early 2000 years, well, some nerds hanging around and uh, nothing substantial to write home about. So that changed uh, uh, incredibly. Well, for IBB, it is certainly fun to be here, but it is also work. Uh, we, 40% of our clients are startups, and we support them with a broad range of products from consultancy to, uh, to uh, grants, to, to senior debt and junior debt, and certainly also venture capital. And we combine we combine this tool of instruments according to the needs of the clients. Well, my image for that is an experience I once made in London when I, where I lived a couple of years and I was in desperate need of a plumber. And eventually I found one and the plumber said, well, I'm not a plumber, I'm a problem solver. And I like this image, so if clients say the IBB is not a bank, it is a, prob a financial problem solver, I would appreciate that very much. So, and we hope to get in contact with many of uh, the Berlin-based startups and uh, seek to support them best as we can. Super. They can check you out also with all your programs here uh, in the next hall, uh, even if you have not been founded or just founded. So, uh, thank you for being here. All right, let's go into details a little bit. Um, um, Hagen, go, coming back to you. Um, cooperating with startups for quite some time now, um, do you have good examples of what you or a startup provides so it, the cooperation works well? And then, on the other hand, maybe 
a bad example, what is not working well. Um, yeah. So the people here can learn and see what it takes to, to work together with a corporate. Um, so you guys, to think of it, uh, so maybe uh, Johannes, so the question would, I would refer that to you afterwards as well. But Hagen, okay, you go good, first. Good. So first of all, we have a lot of startup where it works very good. One is, for example, uh, and for the Magenta POS system, that's a system for very small businesses so that they can do also digitizations for shops and uh, services to uh, bring out their orders, to have a CRM all integrated, to have an integrated website. Marco Burris is one of the, uh, or is the founder of it. So, and what we experienced there in a positive way was that he was uh, persistent working with us because in the beginning three four years ago it is not easy for my folks to work with startups they are not used to it and that is not as pragmatic as it should be and I wish it is more pragmatic also sometimes in telecom so what makes him successful is that he was always and again relentlessly explaining the value the customer centricity and trying to really convince in all details everybody. And really, he did a marathon. And sometimes I said to him, where do you get the energy from? <laughs> uh, maybe also from Aeon. <laughs> but uh, what was really the difference that he worked and was flexible also to align a little bit to our processes, but always in a positive way to convince the people with a good attitude in terms of there's value in, there's a business case, I can prove my idea with some pilots and with customers and that makes a difference. On the other hand, a bad experience is uh, when the people are not reliable. And we had that also because a commitment is a commitment. If you fail, that's fine but then let's be very authentic and open. And sometimes it was a great idea, but we experienced, including the startup, that that was the wrong way where we go, uh, uh, have gone to. And then to realize it, maybe to change your business model, and I experienced this as well, that some of the startups really changed and did their way, and that was amazing how much energy they put in and changed the way and then in the end they made it successful. Also not thinking that everybody is becoming a unicorn, that is also good. Uh, keep a little bit on the floor sometimes. Yeah. But when the, when the horse is dead two times, then don't ride it a third time. So that's also an advice I, I would give. So persistence, confidence, and uh, being reliable are Absolutely. more or less the... Uh, and the it's answer. work. It's yeah. hard work, yeah. and it's sometimes more than 12 hours. Yeah. Johannes, for you, how, how, how would you like to add from your side? I think it goes in similar directions. I would say sometimes startups are too easily overselling. And um, when you dig a little deeper and test, you learn that it's just not, not deeply founded and not really thought through. So I would say, yes, be ambitious, but don't oversell. Mm -hmm. Because um, you meet the reality too soon and you only lose trust usually once. And um, a second thing I would say is um, be adaptive. So you may have a great idea and think it works, but then you meet the customers and we only work with startups that are offering solutions that are offering value for our customers. So we don't try to build an empire of financial states. Yeah. We try to have things that create value for our customers and therefore we always bring them similar to you in touch to our customers and then you, you ought to be open. You need to learn something you thought should work just doesn't work yeah. the same way. And then just as long as you're open and focus and listen to the customers and adapt your product, you still can adjust. But if you just try to insist on your own solution irrespective of customer needs, you're probably sitting on, 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 on the wrong horse, I would say. A very good one we lately work with a lot is Sight Machine. It's an American startup. They offer 
products that optimize production processes in the real industry to save energy and obviously emit less CO2. And there you meet a variety of different industries. And uh, build or producing tires is quite a different thing from, I don't know, producing cars. Although in the end they come together, but it's, it's a very different product line, very different needs. And then a good startup feels if, they re if their product is really fit for purpose for a variety or just fit for purpose for specific <coughs> industries. And um, that's for me uh, some test questions. No. Mega, that, that uh, pays also into actually my next question would have been key success factors, which you answered pretty much in your, uh, in your statements already. Um, so, uh, Stefan, a uh, question to you. Um, uh, being the government with tax money, spending our, the tax money, of course, but what, what are the programs you are investing in so startups get something out of it and uh, so everyone here can learn where they have to go to maybe and understand this is what I get maybe out of the government. Yeah, it depends on the situation where the startup is. Uh, in our point of view, and I want to highlight two aspects. Uh, the one aspect is financing, because uh, uh, I think it's very important uh, to support uh, the startups uh, in the financial sector. And there are various uh, funding instruments uh, in the area of financing. We have the Exist Gründerstipendium, and with this instrument, Graduates and scientists in the pre-startup phase receive a one-year grant to implement their business plan. And another example is the high-tech Gründer Fund, Germany's largest seed fund, and which uh, fin finances young, highly innovative, technology-oriented companies. And one third of the fund uh, volume comes from the uh, private uh, sector, from private investors. And the other. The other area is uh, the matching between startups and uh, established economy. And there we built up uh, in the last years uh, our digital hub initiative in Germany with uh, 12 locations in Germany. And I hope uh, that we can uh, present this next year in the startup night to I'll show. I'll take all your word for it. Yes, to show <laughs> all the startups uh, what we are doing there. Um, and as uh, Rick said, in the past it was uh, very, very uh, complicated to bring startups and established company together. So our job was in the past uh, to build bridges between established uh, industry, established companies and startups. Now the situation is a little bit other because all companies know that they need the uh, power and that they need the experience of startups for their own business model. They build up their own incubators and so on. So now uh, we try to help and to support the startups in the daily work to bring them together with uh, science, uh, with experts, with um, uh, uh, other companies, and this is the Digital Hub initiative. Super. Um, we, we're running a little bit of time, but I gave the sign already to, to our uh, uh, directors here that I will, it's, it's my event. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Matthias, question to you, um, maybe we can, have the answers a little bit shorter, but when you're investing in startups, how are you looking at them? What is the, the thing you're, you, you want to see in startups? Well, a convincing model and uh, a convincing client base. And um, well, we have a broad sectoral focus, so it is uh, ICT, life science, industrial technologies and creative industries, so we do not follow the latest fashion. But uh, we find it particularly exciting how IT has become a cross-sectoral technology, driving the change also in the established industry. And we need that change in industry also in Berlin. That's why we have, we have a particular focus on that. But we follow a lot of trends. That is fintech, fintechs, uh, blockchain, and of course artificial intelligence, which uh, had shown a successful entry into healthcare. And we have a couple of startups there. Super, the technology uh, po uh, point of view is very interesting. Coming to the question, the last question, before the absolute last question, it goes to Johannes and Ad Hagen again, is uh, from the perspective of technology, what are you looking at? What, what, what are you looking for? What kind of technologies are your drivers for telecom and E.ON? Will you start? I would say, you know, the, the, the toughest thing to, to solve will be the, 
extremely almost um, yeah, extremely growing complexity of the energy world. In the past, there was a few big general power stations and uh, some lines and then consumption. Now everybody is a consumer. Everybody tries to optimize their own processes. Everything is connected. And to square the, op the, the optimal point while still living, leaving optimization room for the final customers and not just forcing them to, to, to just do what the system tells them. To square that, it's only doable with, with quite complex digital solutions. Probably there is not the one super thing. It's a combination, but then the combiner of the combinations will be uh, the big thing. And so solving the complexity of the energy system of the future, that is the one thing. If we would ever find it anywhere, I probably would uh, immediately buy it, but um, Probably not yet on shelf. <laughs> well, if you have the answer, go uh, to Sparkassenverband and uh, talk to the E.ON guys. I would absolutely go there and look. Okay. Hang. So technology-wise, uh, what I think is, for me, very impressive is quantum computing, where I'm really interested in what will be the outcome and the technology in the next three, four years. Uh, this can make a big change. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'm highly interested in blockchain, what really comes out of it. Uh, also in the next two, three years. Right. So it's so valid that this is going to be implemented, but uh, how we are doing this, this will be a huge transformation. And I'm deeply convinced that uh, analytics is a key driver for change over the next three, four years, five years in uh, classical industries, and that this is going to make a huge difference for all of us because we can anticipate a lot we are getting advices every day, every minute, and then we can choose. And uh, the, the quality of our decisions may improve a lot. And that could also help our environment to save energy and treat the environment right. So these are the three things I'm very interested in. Okay, super. All right, a last question uh, to all of you, and I would like you to, like one sentence maybe, or two, Max, uh, <laughs> starting with Matthias, is what is your advice to, to founders, to startups? One. Well, one. One. Yeah, well, don't, you have it, one yeah, go ahead. don't operate behind closed doors. Get involved, exchange with others. Mega. And if, if the company is early stage, I strongly advise to join the business uh, competition. If, if, if you want to tweet that, use hashtag sun19. Yeah? Stefan. Yeah, don't let the hesitants and the adapters uh, keep you from your way. Make your own thing and uh, be successful. Super. Johannes. Have your head in the sky but the feet on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. All right. Hark. Customer needs first and the boss does the first step. <laughs> All right. Thank you to the audience. Give them a uh, big applause. Thank you for being here and uh, hope to see you soon again. <laughs>